On the dashboard, you can find the mostly used applications shortcut such as attendance, leave, training, expenses, performance. So let's see what we can do with these applications. You can start setting up ISHRM with the company structure. You need to define your company structure as company, head office, departments, units if you have any, teams likewise. So when you properly define your company structure, you can see the company graph under the company graph tab. Then go to the job details setup. Here you can set up job titles, pay grades and employment status. Then you can move on to the qualification setup. Here you can set up skills, education, certifications and languages of employees. Setting up these details prior to adding employees is really important because when you add employees, you can select the right set of job details, qualification uh, to the right employee. Now, when you're done with that, you can start adding employees. You need to go to the employees module and click on employees. You can click on add new to uh, add employees manually. So under personal details, you can add employees personal details, then identification details like NIC number, driver's license number and uh, details like that. And then go to the work tab, you can add the employment status, department, uh, you can select the job title, uh, pay grades and you can add uh, all the details related to the work. And then you can add contact details here. And last one is the report line. So you can define the report line under report tab. Here you can select the supervisor and who are the indirect supervisors, first level approvers. So if you have multi-level approval option in your company, uh, this is where you need to define the level, approval levels of employees. Um, and you can save it uh, once you're done. So this way you can add employees manually, but if you feel uh, this is uh, not uh, convenient, you can uh, import employee data to the system rather than, than adding them manually. Uh, to do this, you need to go to the system module, click on data. Uh, we have created a data importer for this. Uh, so you don't need to create a data importer. So you can directly go to the data import files, um, click on add new and upload the file. So you need to create a CSV file. You can uh, download a sample CSV file here and enter all your employees detail to the CSV file and upload it here. So you need to select employee data import as the data import definitions here. So this way you can uh, import data to the system. The other main setting is creating user accounts. You need to go to system, users, click on add new. First you need to add a username, then an email address, then select the employee. Then you need to select the specific user level for the employee. So you can give admin level access, manager level access or employee level access. So if you are creating a user role, you can select one of these user level as well. Then select the language and set a default module. This is important because uh, when you set a default module, this is the first module that employee can see as soon as they log into the account and save. So this way you can create user accounts manually, but if you find this is difficult, you can automate the process the same way that we imported employee data to the system, you can uh, do it under the data module and import the uh, data. So we are done with the main settings. Now let's go back and uh, do the basic settings. First, uh, let's start with the training setup. You can create a course here and then a training session and then assign it to an employee. Let's see how to do it. Click on add new. First you need to give a code name.
and then the course name and select the coordinator and mention the trainer's name uh, add trainer details if you want to then payment type currency enter the cost and select the status click on save now we have created the course let's go and see how to create a training session click on add new name the training session select the course that you created uh, if you want you can add details then schedule the time, assignment due date, delivery method, delivery location if needed and then attendance type. If you have any attachment you can upload them here and then training certificate required yes or no according to your requirement and then save. So we have created the training session as well. Let's see how to assign it to an employee. Go to the employee training session tab. Click on add new. Select the employee. Select the training session. And select the status according to your need. And save. Uh, now the other module is the project module. Here you can create a project and assign it to an employee. Then you can create clients under the clients module. So when you create new clients here, when you are creating new projects, you can select the created clients under here. Next is the leave module. This is one of the most used modules in ISHRM. First you need to start with the leave period. This is an example leave period. Uh, it starts from January 1st, ends in December 31st. According to your company requirement, you can create the leave period and then go to the leave types and start adding all the leave types that you offer in your organization. Let's see uh, how to create annual leaves. Type the name, then enter the number of leaves that you offer for the leave period. You can fill these details according to your company requirement. And the next is leave accrue enabled option. You can enable this one. So if you enable this option, which means uh, your employees won't be able to have the, uh, the total number of leaves at the beginning of the year. Instead, it will accrue to the leave balance within the leave period. Let's say if it is 12 uh, for the whole leave period, they'll get only one at the first month, second month another one. So the leave balance will show as two. Likewise, it will accrue to the leave balance. And then next is leave carried forward. So if you have any requirement, you can uh, uh, fill these things according to your need. And next we have proportionate leaves on join date. So if you have any requirement, you can just enable this one. And then next one is use employee leave period. So some companies, they don't have one particular leave period. Instead, they use employees join date as the leave period. So you can enable this option here uh, if you have any such requirement. You can enable the notification emails and then uh, select a group uh, or you can uh, leave this one as well. I'll show you how to create a leave group in a couple of minutes uh, and save. So this way you can add all, all the leave types uh, that you offer. Then go to the work week. You can define the work week according to your company requirements. So in default we have set Monday to Friday as working days and weekend as non-working days but some companies they offer Friday uh, as a non-working day and Saturday as a working day. So according to your company requirement, you have to set this up and then go to the holidays tab, add all the holidays which are there for a leave period. Then we have the leave rules. I'll take an example to uh, show you the importance of leave rules. Let's say uh, 
you you offer 12 days of annual leave for all your employees but you have to make an exception for one particular employee or leave group or for a, you know like according to job titles for for QA engineers or project managers you are going to offer more than 12 days of leaves let's say 14 annual days you are offering for project managers or you can select a leave group or maybe a particular employee so if you want to make an exception you can you know uh, use leave rules uh, for that type of situation so you can fill these things and create a leave rule and then we have paid time off you can add all your PTOs for employees under PT, uh, paid time off tab then we have the leave groups uh, tab here as I uh, told you you can create a leave group uh, for an example let's say uh, uh, first uh, you need to edit leave group you need to uh, create leave groups like this uh, let's take an example if you want to offer maternity leaves you need to categorize all your employees to female employees and male employees so you create a leave group saying female and another one saying male and then you need to categorize your employees to those two groups so you click on add new uh, you select the employee and select the uh, leave group so like this way uh, you categorize all your employees and you go to leave types and create a leave uh, type for maternity leave and at the bottom you can select uh, this leave type for the female employees so that's how you can use uh, leave groups at last we have the employee lead list here you can find uh, all employees uh, leave status uh, pending leaves approved leaves everything uh, as the admin next we have the expenses module under the expense module you can create uh, an expense category payment method uh, in order to record expenses and under employee expenses you can record expenses of all your employees next we have the overtime module under this you can create overtime categories and assign overtime to employees also you can leave all the employees overtime requests as an admin under overtime request tab then uh, we have company loans and company assets same way you can add company loans and assets and assign them to the employees the other important module in ishrm is custom fields you can create a custom field to these modules company assets company structures employee and travel requests so let's take one example and see how to create a custom field select this and add a field label then select the field type uh, you can select the field type according to the answer that you are expecting so if you are uh, if you enable the text field or text area options which means your employees can answer the question by a sentence or multiple sentences so if you have enabled one of the select options which means your employees can uh, select over options also you can uh, up, allow employees to upload a file enter a date or date time so if you have enabled the select options you have to mention what are the uh, options that they have using field options so for this particular custom field i'm going to select it as uh, text field as the field type and then the validation uh, if you have any requirements you can select validation for this example i'm going to say number and then give the priority of the column and then save now let's go to the company assets module to see the created custom field go to the company assets tab click on add new here you can see the uh, custom field that we added thank you for watching this video also you can follow up our user guide for more information about ishrm features